It's nine minutes past ten. Time for your Sears Theater. The Sears Radio Theater will present a story of two men in climb. Jack, you all right? Yeah. I'm, I'm working on a hold. A blind man would have a handhold by now. Will you help me? Your host, Richard Widmark, will be with you after this message from your local station. I'm lost and lonely, scared and sad, trembling at the thought of making you mad. My love is yours, but at times you're so cold. If life's like this, take me before I grow old. This song was written by a man now serving time in a state prison. Most of the men and women in prison today were abused children, and many abused children grow up to abuse their own children. Child abusers can be helped. Find out how. Write Prevent Child Abuse, Box 2866, Chicago, Illinois, 60690. Please stop the hurt. I've suffered since my birth. Join the abused child's fight. A message of the Ad Council and the National Committee for Prevention of Child Abuse. This is Richard Widmark. When formed by eruptive agencies, the birth of a mountain is a violent event. Vesuvius, Hood, Rainier and Shasta are a few examples. Their surfaces bulged upward by cooled volcanic materials. However, the world's great mountain chains, the thin-aired Andes, the majestic Rockies, and the giants of the Himalayas were formed beneath the earth under much less dramatic circumstances, known as folding. Direct aid climbers today use steel pitons and nylon rope to challenge forbidding heights that superstitious men two centuries earlier believed the domicile of dragons. They pit brain and muscle against the impassable for momentary triumph atop breathless grandeur. And in risking death for triumph over a mountain's natural terrors, no expedition ever disgraced itself by admitting defeat and turning back. But what if you find yourself, as Jack DeShields and Dan Hunt do, on a climb where you can't turn back? And you can't go forward. Cut off from help. And that's only the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening, brought to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. Your hosts, Lorne Green. I'll bring you stories of the Old West and the New. Andy Griffith with a look at the funny side of life. Vincent Price with tales of mystery and suspense. Cicely Tyson with stories about love hate, and related things. Richard Whitmark. I'll bring you stories of pure adventure. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Climb, by Bruce Martin. Our stars, Vic Perrin and Stephen Markle. When I need advice, I go to my mom. Why not? It's free. Now that I'm married and moving into a new house, I want all the advice I can get. So when mom says shop Sears, I listen. You should. Sears is a great help on those big items you'll need for your new home. Major appliances like washers, dryers, and refrigerators. They'll deliver, install, and service. I always depend on Sears. You should, too. Sears, 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 where America shops. 
I can't believe they can do it for $19.99. Installed? The aluminized Sears muzzler is only $19.99 installed. And listen to the muzzler promise. Sears promises that the muzzler will last as long as you own your American-made car. Or return it for refund or replacement free. And if Sears installed it, they'll install the new one free. Well, you can't beat that. I think it's fantastic. It's a great promise. The muzzler, just $19.99 installed. Clamps if needed, $0.99 cents each extra. Sizes to fit most American-made cars. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Generations ago, families dined by the warmth of the open hearth. Today, Sears rekindles this spirit with its open hearth dining room furniture. Faithfully rendered early American designs and careful workmanship give it an heirloom quality. The satin glow and warm highlighting of Sears open hearth take 26 steps to achieve. There's no shorter method to bring out the beauty of the wood. And like all good furniture, open hearth is made to last for a long time with sturdy tongue and groove and mortise and tenon construction. Choose from 16 different pieces of open hearth at most Sears retail stores. Hey, look, in here, inside this stylish man's dress shirt. I'm a Sears Value dress shirt label just popping with pride because Sears Value dress shirts are sure to be popular for a number of reasons. They have fashion spread collars, come in classic patterns and solids in short and long sleeves. You'll appreciate the permapressed polyester or polyester cotton blends for easy care, plus at low value prices, what a buy! Just look for me, the Value dress shirt label at Sears Men's Store, where style, sense, and satisfaction combine to label me right for you. <laughs> If you were standing at the base of Long's Peak, 10 miles outside Estes Park in Colorado, you might be able to see the figures of two climbers as they move upward on what is called the Diamond Face. 1,700 smooth vertical feet of rock on the east face of Long's Peak. Unfortunately, as Jack DeShields and Dan Hunt continue their arduous ascent, there is no one standing below to observe their progress. At this moment, however, right now, you are up there with Jack and Dan as they climb. That's odd. The rock surface shows signs of extreme wear, but I swear I pounded that piton in solid. That's out okay. I'll clip a carabiner through the piton's eye and slip in the climbing rope. Need more slack on your running line? No. You're doing fine, Dan. Keep me on a tight belay, though. The surface on this part of the diamond face is glass smooth. Roger, Wilco. Bilco, I have you belayed on a red alert. <laughs> How old is the diamond face? Well, the whole Rocky Mountain range is relatively young. A toddler from the Mesozoic era. 60, 70 million years old. <laughs> Climbing. Climb. I think what's so incredible is the diamond face will challenge rock climbers centuries after you and I conquer her today. Good climbers appreciate mountains, experience them. Conquering isn't involved. That's your personal philosophy, Jack? Oh, I have only one philosophy on a climb. The leader never falls. <laughs> I knew there had to be some compensation for looking up your backside the last two hours. I'm allowed to fall. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I appreciate hanging three-quarters of the way up 1,700 feet of sheer rock wall as much as the next guy. I'm just looking forward to sticking another flag in the relief map on my den wall tonight. Uh, concentrate on reaching the summit first, okay, Dan? I'm right behind, uh, below you. Uh, the lead piton's pulling out. Falling! Lay on. Help me out, Jack. Grab a handhold. Jack, you all right? Yeah. I'm, I'm working on a hold. A blind man would have a handhold by now. Will you help me? I am blind. I I can't wipe the blood out of my eyes when I'm digging my fingers into rock. Blind? Above you, to your left. The outcropping where you hit your head. I've I've got a handhold. Pull me up a bit. I'm pulling. Okay. I'm standing on the outcropping. How bad are you hurt? Well, the blood's running into my eyes. Don't move. You move an inch either way, you'll be in orbit. I can't belay you and pound a piton at the same time. How far did I fall? The slack on your belaying rope was about ten feet. A leader fall is double the distance of the running line, roughly twenty feet. I put the carabiner through the piton and clipped on your running line. You're tied to the diamond face. <laughs> I'm not asking for a blow-by-blow -blow account. Wipe the damn blood out of my eyes. Coming down. Double check your holes coming down. Does a horse make big potty in its stall? 
Why another piton? Because you were right. This part of the diamond face is all glass. Of course, you hit your head on the only outcropping for 50 feet. Dan, I feel blood running down my chest inside my shirt. Let me tie in before I put on my surgical gloves. I'm sure it's nothing. 30 or 40 stitches won't close. You really know how to keep up a guy's morale. And I'm digging the first aid kit out of my pack from behind the bologna sandwiches. Don't you... Don't you dare ask me if I'm hungry. You read my mind. Okay, cotton balls, iodine. Turn your face to me. Oh, wow, Jack, you're a six-foot replica of the Red Sea. Uh, the mountain ripped the Panama Canal under both your eyebrows. Well, head wounds usually bleed worse than they are. Spare me the commentary and wipe the blood out of my eyes. I'd love to, but the blood won't stop. I'm prescribing gauze and canceling the climb. You wrap gauze around my eyes and you condemn me to die on this mountain. Well, what am I supposed to do? Watch you bleed to death? Nobody's ever led a blind man off a mountain peak like the diamond face. I've handled technical climbs for 13 years, I know. The blood isn't only inside your shirt, it's dripping on your boots. You wipe the blood out of my eyes and I'll climb. Listen a minute and you'll hear the drip. Do it. If there was another... Just do it. I carry prescription codeine in my first aid kit. Exactly what I want to do, immobilize myself. You're wrapping enough gauze around my eyes to muffle a gunshot. What happened up there? I heard you yell your piton had pulled out, then I braced for the belay. I hammered the piton into a patch of rotten rock. Rotten rock? The piton sounded solid. You even tested it. We weren't listening. We were talking. When rock is piton compatible, each hammer blow carries an increasingly higher pitch, and I didn't listen. But rotten rock... On this mountain, the diamond face? Yeah, rotten rock from the spring thaw. The heavy snows melt and pour down the summit in a waterfall. The runoff strikes the rock wall where I tried to sink that piton. Gee, Stan, I haven't been blindfolded since the last time I played pin the tail on the damn donkey. Oh, the blindfold's only temporary. You'll get your sight back. There. I taped your head bandage. Hey, you buckling? Uh, uh, no basket case little sewing machine knee, that's all. Too much muscle tension in the legs. Now move your right leg half a foot. That's it. Now plant. Better? Yeah. Yeah, the muscles are relaxed again. Okay. What's our next move? We've only got one move. You tie me to the mountain and you go for help. What happens an hour from now when you cramp up with sewing machine knee again? I don't recommend stretching your legs on this rock face without looking. Dan... This is our first and probably our last climb together. Now, you mentioned a wonderful wife and some kids. How many? It's a beautiful wife and a couple of wonderful kids. Amy will be eight this month. Diane's five. Now, if you don't want to spoil Amy's eighth birthday party and maybe save my life at the same time, you get your butt down the mountain. Amy asked to come along this morning. She said she wanted to watch me. I refuse to leave you in an untenable position. I'm not getting through to you. Nightfall catches us on the diamond face the way we are without proper equipment. We're dead. Oh, we could yell for help or signal. Any hikers on the trail below should see us. What hikers? We made a late start driving out of Denver this morning. We'd have passed any hikers back on the Chasm Lake Trail. And then maybe a ranger. The ranger at the check-in station told us what to expect climbing out of season. Solitude. Okay. No hikers to help we can still try to signal the ranger station. <laughs> With what, smoke? Rock doesn't burn, Dan. I thought we could nail a couple of shirts or the packs to the diamond face and set them on fire. Throw in your pants and underwear, too. The station's a good two-hour hike from the diamond face. Two hours. Well, that's why you have to leave now. That's why I can't leave. Sunset's in four hours. Two hours to the ranger station, and two hours back puts you in darkness. It'd be a night you'd never survive, not with your head injury. Oh, you'd rather hold my hand through the night and maybe die with me. I'm asking you to come up with an alternative. You're the class six climber. You scaled the diamond face three times before today's assault. Tell me our options. We have no options. We're too high up on the face to make a safe rappel down. Sure. Under normal conditions, rappelling would be the fastest exit out of danger, but you can't see. A blind rappel is out of the question. I've rappelled in darkness when I've had to. But we lack a decent belay point, so unfortunately, rappelling is out. What are the chances on a slow descent? Without eyes, less than zero. There were half a dozen decent handholds on the way up the diamond face. I'd be totally dependent on equipment holes. Tie me in. I prefer my chances against the night. Well, we might have more of a chance than you think on a descent. 
gravity pull would be weaker, less strain on the muscles. Fine, except this bandage doesn't allow me to see my footing. I know a secure handhold by feel, but footing... I'll guide you. No, thanks. You'll guide me into a free fall without a parachute. At least consider it as an option. A blind man has a million to one shot climbing up or down the diamond face without falling. So we're back to tying me in. Have you noticed how disgustingly excellent our climbing weather has been today? I mean, who could ask for more? Warm sun, healthy breeze to cool you, maddeningly comfortable. Yeah, it's been grand. All that grandeur at our feet. Tiny chasm lake at the Diamond Face Base. Clay red saber tooth Rocky Mountains stretching off into the horizon. Oh, even a few snow caps. The most seductive torture chamber ever created by a lousy 20 foot fall. Dan, nobody at the Sierra Club will call you a coward for going for help. They'll praise your common sense. I'd like to change the view. Say that again? I said I'd like to change the view. Take it in from a safe piece of terra firma. <laughs> you, you stubborn novice. You did it. You came up with the option we needed. I did? Yeah. Granted, a blind man can't climb up or down the diamond face. And you won't tie me in because the sheer rock structure hasn't a single secure position. Right. But if we move off the diamond face horizontally until we find a secure position, you could tie me in and go for help. Sounds good. Sounds beautiful. I've been hanging in this spot so long, my finger muscles are bunched up into my shoulders. <laughs> oh, Tell me the diamond face layout. I am looking at 30, 35 feet of sheer rock to the first salient position on my right. Yeah. The left side is definitely out. It's at least 100 feet across the diamond face in that direction. I've got a map in my pack. Oh, hold still. I'll have a look. I have a picture of the mountain in my mind. I remember a less technical route traced off to the right side of the diamond face. Yeah. Uh, I've got the map open. Well, you see it? I see the cable route, keyhole route. No, no, you're at the summit. You're too far up on the map. The wind's picking up. It's an afternoon characteristic to the diamond face. According to this ranger map, the summit is accessible by a hiking trail from the other side of the mountain. If we could reach the summit by dark, we'd be able to walk down the back side tomorrow morning. We're nowhere near the summit. Now, our concern is getting off the diamond face. Go a, a quarter down the diamond and move a few degrees to the right. And that's our position. Are you talking about Stetner's ledges? Yeah. Yeah. I did the Stetner descent route once. Excellent climbing surface the entire way. Plenty of footing. Stetner's ledges sounds like the place we want. Now the map's blown away. Uh, Jack, you holding? Yep. What is it? Devil winds. I knew the Diamond Face experienced afternoon summer storms, but I thought by late September... Just be happy this isn't summer. Those summer storms are renowned for a high incidence of lightning. Oh, great. What else can I expect? The devil winds to return. What happens if the devil winds return when we're crossing the Diamond Face? We'll both be blown to kingdom come. Nearly everyone at our party mentioned our new Sears Dream Supreme carpeting. Didn't anyone say anything about my rutabaga dip? Marvin said Dream Supreme looks so thick and luxurious. He loved its velvety soft plush pile. What about my rutabaga dip? Eloise adored the color. Of my rutabaga dip? I told her that avocado lime is just one of Dream Supreme's 20 lustrous colors, and when Doris heard that Dream Supreme is so reasonably priced and treated with Scotchgard brand fabric protector... Okay, what about my tuna fish upside down cake? Dream Supreme carpeting in most larger Sears retail stores. Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The Power Spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power Spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out, dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. Hey, look, in here, inside this stylish man's dress shirt. I'm a Sears Value dress shirt label just popping with pride because Sears Value dress shirts are sure to be popular for a number of reasons. They have fashion spread collars, come in classic patterns and solids in short and long sleeves. You'll appreciate the permapressed polyester or polyester cotton blends for easy care, plus at low value prices, what a buy! Just look for me, the Value dress shirt label at Sears Men's Store, where style, sense, and satisfaction combine to label me right for you. 
I love to eat. But it takes so long to cook. That's why we both love our new Kenmore microwave oven from Sears. I can cook a five-pound roast medium rare in just 30 minutes or three strips of bacon in three and a half minutes on a paper plate. Bake two potatoes in eight minutes and cook vegetables faster than boiling them in water. That means less time in the kitchen. And more with you. Fast, clean, cool cooking with Sears Kenmore microwave ovens, all with automatic defrost. Choose the right model for your kitchen from the many styles available at most Sears retail stores. On the sheer diamond face of Long's Peak in Colorado, two men continue a climb in the course of which one slip will bring death to both of them. Jack DeShields is a Class 6 direct aid climber, a professional who has been temporarily blinded by an accidental fall. Dan Hunt, his companion, is a mountaineering apprentice and father of two, upon whose eyes their lives now depend. Can you imagine what two men in such a situation would be talking about while one of them hammers life-giving steel pitons into the rock wall of the diamond face? Just listen. You are with them. The whole Sierra Club is on the edge of its collective seat listening to your talk. Oh, I noticed an ample supply of yawns. Believe me, nobody was yawning. Not many professionals have climbed mountains on each of the continents. I guess today is your toughest setback ever. I don't follow you. I'm hanging here talking, listening to you sink a piton. And I'm one of the seven dwarfs. You unhooked yourself from the belaying rope. When we cross the diamond face, my footing won't be as secure as yours. I see no reason in pulling you off the mountain with me. I'm reclipping your running line. Even though I'm temporarily blind, some decisions remain my responsibility. Wrong, Jack. I make the decisions now. You have the knowledge, the experience, and probably the stamina, but I have the eyes. I'm grateful that you're concerned with my safety, but this... I reclipped you to my running line not because I'm worried you might fall, but because I'm selfish. I'm afraid I might fall. And you better belay me when I yell falling. I'll do my best. Pray lead on, oh sighted one. I'll tie you in on Stetner's ledges. Back up, Pete, on every six feet across the diamond face should give us a fighting chance. Uh, in our case, I'd say don't bet on it, but couldn't hurt. When fall impact yanks the lead piton out of rock, the secondary pitons usually follow in rapid succession. Remember when you went to the circus, how the crowd gasped when the ringmaster announced the high wire act was performing without a net? Yes, sure. Well, what we're crossing doesn't even have a wire. You ready to test the backup? I feel like a kid testing the water temperature with his toe. Well, your form wouldn't make the cover of a field handbook, but nobody's watching anyway. <laughs> On a direct line from your head, arm's length away, you'll find a crack in the rock wall that might pass for a handhold. What do you mean, might pass? I only spot the holes. You decide whether the hold will support your weight. Found it. You can't stop between holes like that. You'll fall. What was that move worth, a foot? You're selling yourself short by half a foot. Oh, at this pace, we'll reach Stetner's ledges in moonshine. Determination makes its own time. <laughs> a positive thinker and nowhere to hide. Somebody save me. Please, no negative vibes. I'm trying to believe what I'm saying myself. You know, you'll wear yourself out machine hammering that way. Yeah, I'm a regular hammering dynamo. But this wind affects my efficiency. Jack... The devil wind isn't coming back, is it? Probably. Oh, thanks. My paranoia needed feeding. <laughs> Any time. I take it when the hammering stops. That's my signal to prepare for my next foot and a half leap. You got it. <laughs> feet and handholds are in a direct line. Three feet apart, it's your furthest reach. You know, don't you, that you're taking liberties with the blind? I've got you belayed if you slip. Besides, I want to test my system. <laughs> That's it. Uh, plant your feet. Your handhold's a couple of inches higher up. No, no good. I can't find it. Your back up holding? You only fell a few inches. Everything's under control. Oh, I'd trade these worthless fingers for anything that'd chip rock. Now, the belaying rope slacked off. You found a hold. Foothold. My fingers are wedged in a hairline crack. Keep moving. I'm spread like a freshly skinned hide hung out to dry. You move out that holder. I can't ease up on the belaying rope. Brace yourself. I'm holding you. Move. The pitons. Keep searching for a hold. 
This isn't working. Keep searching for something that isn't... Ah, got one. I see another hold above your left ear. Okay. I'm planted. We, we made good progress. Five, six feet. You call it progress. I call it scrambling for my life. Well, you didn't bargain for this when you volunteered to guide me across the diamond face. I knew what I was buying into. I told you our act has no wire. I'm talking about fatigue. Fatigue makes the best of climbers careless, and on this rock wall, carelessness kills. Only another 25 feet to step in his ledges. I promise not to get careless. Well, you already are careless. Your line of protective piton scars the mountain, and you've no plan for extracting them. I think other climbers will forgive us the pitons we leave behind under the circumstances. Well, that's not my point. You're pressing. And that's careless. Now you tie me in and get out while you can. Your next hold comes direct from the Alpine catalog, custom made. Now extend your right leg halfway. Plant. Plant. It's all right. I'm on. My fingers feel raw. I think I scraped all the skin off my knuckles, too. A few bloody fingers won't do you any harm. Come on already. Coming. I'm coming. How far? Another five feet, and we've reached Stetner's ledges. You ready? Yeah. And able. I have my reservations about willing. <laughs> Straight out from your shoulder, you'll feel a depression in the diamond face. I'm... Touching it now. I didn't find any prominent holes next to the rock ledge like I expected. You might be able to push across the depression and brace your feet on its lip. Are you on the rock ledge? No, I'm hanging right beside it. I'll help you onto the ledge first and then climb on. Right. I'm pushing across. <laughs> this position isn't secure at all. Another couple of feet. Uh, 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 falling. Steady yourself. I'm dragging on your belaying rope. I pray to God you have your footing. I've got zip. The first piton pulled out. You're hanging on me, and I'm hanging on that last piton. Any second, it'll pull out, too. How far am I from Stetner's ledges? Three feet. Grab any hold you can. I'm going to swing out onto the rock ledge. You're on. You made it onto the ledge. Falling. Belay on. Oh, thank God. I'm below the rock ledge with good climbing surface. Climbing? Climb. Oh, oh man. Oh, it's nice to be alive. When I fell, I was sure you'd follow me down the mountain. Oh. How did you manage to hold on? Oh. Once I... I pulled myself up onto the rock ledge. I braced my feet and my back against the mountain. I just reeled in the slack on the belaying rope as fast as I could until you yelled. And then it was a matter of being prepared for the fall impact. And fortunately, I was. My waist rope was crushing my rib cage, hanging on the end of that belay rope. Another five minutes and I'd be purple. How bad are you banged up? I'm not sure ribs are a bit sore. Your ribs have a right to feel sore. You were thrashed against the rock wall twice. Feel broken? There's no way to tell unless I stand up. <laughs> I'm too big to move for the moment. You and me both. Who is Stetner? I don't know. Well, whoever Stetner is, I appreciate the use of his ledge. <laughs> After we catch our breath, what would you think of making a try for the summit? I think you were a figment of my imagination and that I was delirious. <laughs> we used all our pitons crossing the diamond face. I haven't any equipment left to tie you in. You skunk. You planned that all along, didn't you? If I did tell you, you'd never have crossed the diamond face. I couldn't leave you on the rock wall to die. Oh, instead, you decided to lure me from one survival crisis to another without my knowledge. I resent being manipulated. The ranger map pointed our way off this mountain. The way is up. 
We climb Stetton's ledges and walk down the backside trail tomorrow morning. You idiot! You're gambling our lives on reaching the summit in less than three hours of daylight. That's asking a heck of a lot. Especially with a blind man for a handicap. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Well, it all started when my son Willard said... Dad, you just don't understand how it is to be in my shoes. And so I said... Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll do what you do for a day and I'll see how it is. Well, first it was great. I slept in till 20 minutes too, like Willard does. But then after school, Willard told me... Um, the garage is dirty. Would you mind cleaning it up? And I told him... Um, I'll, I'll see about, about it later. Willard, and he said... Ah, 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 ah. You'll see about it All now. right, all right. And so I did. Good but grief. I wasn't very happy about it. Well, after supper, I thought I might catch a little TV, but then Willard reminded me... Um, don't you have homework to do? Two things I know for sure. One is, I'm going to work harder to understand how Willard feels. And two, I got to get Willard's shoes off. My feet are killing me. Listening, caring, and sharing. That's what understanding is all about. From the Mormons, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <laughs> Association says smoke's not just your affair. That smoke screen that you puff around pollutes non smokers' air. It's bad for kids and older folks with lungs not up to par. It's damaging for you, of course, but your smoke travels far. Your lung association says please keep this thought in mind. It's double damage all around and doubly unkind. So try to keep the habit and give. Please do it for your life and breath And everybody say Your Lung Association and you know that cigarettes are a breathing hazard Smokers, please don't add that extra offense Give us a break for life and breath the concluding act of climb. This ledge has a flat surface, a couple of feet wide. We'll be able to walk for a little while. How about we take five? Oh, we can't afford a break. What time is it? Uh, 3.10. We've been climbing for an hour straight. I want to sit down for a minute. Your gamble either pays off in two hours or nightfall traps us on the mountain. The higher we climb the Stetna route, the more hazardous the rock surface becomes. And the harder it is to backtrack to tenable ground. It'll be totally dependent on your eyes to point out my footing near the summit. It's impossible to spot holes in the dark. So like it or not, we're in a foot race with a setting sun. You're right. Darkness falls fast in the mountains. I wouldn't want to deprive myself of the pleasure of sticking another flag pin in my den map. <laughs> Where I can keep the center of gravity over my feet, I'll be able to climb by feel. You have to use your eyes to climb like a chess game several moves ahead. That way, we won't end up on a patch of rotten rock or blocked by a cul-de-sac. A blind man like me would bump his nose against a cul-de-sac before he ever knew it was there. Is the devil wind on this side of the mountain, too? No, no. no we're on the north face of Long's Peak. A ledge ends here. At a junction of rock ledges. One line to the left, one to the right. Which do we take? Uh, this mountain is not my hometown. The last time I took the Stetner route was two years ago. And we used a map to guide us down, not up. And we're faced with a small problem because we don't have a map. The wind blew it away. How do I know which is the safe route? We won't have time to backtrack if we choose the wrong line. I'm depending on your eyes... You decide. You said you remembered a steep pitch towards the summit? Yeah. We'll take the right line, then. Hope we're closer to the summit than I think we are. We climb side by side where possible so I can qualify your holes. Balance is everything on rock. Sometimes rock can look deceptively secure. Watch out for loose outcroppings. Now, stick to a three-point stance. Yeah. Keep both feet and one hand planted. Let your free hand seek out the next hole. 
Spread Eagle climbing tires you out, throws off your balance. I'm aware of that. And I'm also aware of the time. We move fast or we lose. Well, better the rocks fall than us. You don't sound too angry with me for manipulating you into this climb anymore. I am. I haven't forgotten. It's difficult to punch out somebody you can't see. <laughs> I'm forewarned. I'll keep my guard up. I'll either punch you out or I'll buy you a drink. Depends on my condition when I'm returned to civilization. <laughs> What's the time? Uh, 3.40. 3.40 already? What's happened? What do you see? You didn't mention anything about a chimney. Chimney? Well, I don't remember a chimney. Well, there's one standing in our way. Uh, Runs a crooked line toward the summit. Impossible to determine what we'll find above it. Well... We'll climb the chimney to the summit. But if there's a cul-de-sac above the chimney, the game is over and we cash in our chips. We find a cul-de-sac, we'll work our way back down to a wide ledge and spend the night. Now, I know three ways up a chimney. Counterforce, jamming, or, if you absolutely have to, the layback. The chimney closes sharply at the top. We'll have to leave our packs behind. Too narrow for them to make it through. Press and pull yourself up the funneling sides of the chimney, taking as much abrasion on the soles of your feet as you can. Uh, you keep your face and hands free, away from the rock, in case you slip. And for heaven's sake, be careful when jamming. You slip with your elbow jammed in a rock crack, and you're an instant basket case. Climbing. Climb. I'll let you clear a couple of feet before I follow. That way, if you kick down any loose rock, it won't have much momentum when it hits me. Well, lots of prominent rock. You shouldn't have much trouble. Well, chimney climbing requires more strength than skill. How far are you above me? Four feet. Yeah. It's good enough clearance. Climbing. Rock. Rock. Ah. Sorry, Jack. Rock fell away when I touched it. Oh, don't let that slow you down. Sun won't wait for us to catch up. How much daylight we got left? It's four o'clock. We're down to our last hour. Hey, I grabbed your foot. What'd you stop for? Air. I'm not used to chimney climbing. It burns me out. Push yourself. I want to live, man. My arm muscles are trembling. Well, this run for the summit was your idea. Now move. Rock. It cleared me. Keep moving. We've reached the bottleneck. Almost out of the chimney. I feel miserable. My arms and legs are lead weights. I thought the whole point of climbing was to enjoy yourself. Huh. You don't call this fun? Maybe I'd enjoy myself more if you'd quit pushing me. <laughs> I stopped pushing you. You won't reach the summit. Who needs who on this climb? I don't remember asking to tag along. I'm not in the habit of making an ass of myself. The mountain's getting to me. The mountain's getting to both of us. My blindness doesn't help my disposition any either. <laughs> I'm twisting my way out of the bottleneck. There's a small ledge above the chimney. Uh, watch your head. Okay. I'm, I'm through the chimney. My body's aching. I feel like a heavyweight champ's personal punching bag after a hard workout. Uh, I'm a little worn around the edges myself. Dan, I can tell by the air temperature the twilight's fading fast. It could even be dark for all I know. Sun goes down, the night brings the cold. What's the real time? I have half an hour at the outside to guide you up the pitch to the summit. I can see the summit from here. Well, good news makes me antsy. Let's climb. The pitch to the summit has a long vertical crack running up the first ten feet or so. I'll put your hand on it. Well, a crack... Should be secure enough to thread us up the first part of the pitch. Wait for me to point out your next hole when you reach the end of the crack. I promise not to wander off. Rock, hold tight. 
this root needs a little gardening work. <laughs> my, my skin jumps every time you yell, rock. No sense trying to dodge the rocks you hear. You might lose your grip on the crack and fall. The belay line is useless now. Uh, I'll unhook us. Leave the belay line alone. We might need it later. Where's, where's my next hold? Uh, straight out from your shoulder. Use your right hand. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good hold. Pull up on your hands until you're balanced, then plant. This is fine. Slow down. Plenty of footing. You're going to run me over. Pick up the pace, will you? Sun will be down a few minutes. Not much to choose from around me now. The air's growing colder. Plant your left leg or you'll fall. Okay. I'm planted. Will you move? We've cut to some loose rock. Hold on a minute. We'll cross it and hope for the best. We haven't got time to wait. Extend your right hand above your shoulder and bring it down slow. All right. We find a hold. Well, this is another hairline crack. Isn't there anything better? You want me to carry you up the summit, or are you able to help yourself? I carry my own weight. I'd feel out my own holds, but the rock surface is too steep. Rock outcropping above your left knee. Use your hand to make sure it isn't loose first. Then step up on the outcropping if it'll hold you. The outcropping will hold? Where do I put my hands? I'm looking. You aren't buying this ground as an investment. You're climbing it. Come on already. You're going to press us into a swan dive. We got to keep moving before the sun goes down. Uh, good handhold, about three, four inches above your right ear. Find it? This isn't what I call a good handhold, but it'll have to do. Twilight almost gone? Yeah. Twilight's fading fast. Another outcropping ahead of us. Sort of a rock horn shape. How much further after the rock horn? I thought professional climbers had a sixth sense about summits. Can't you smell it? How far? Clear the rock horn and I'll tell you. The horn is a solid two-handed hold above you to your left. I still don't smell summit, Dan. Watch yourself. Keep your balance. Oh, God, no. Footing, footing fell out from under me. My fingers are locked together around the rock horn. I'm planted on the ledge directly above you. I'll reel in the belaying rope and pull you up. Hang on. You're wasting your time, Dan. I unhooked myself from the belaying rope back in the chimney. Damn foolish move. I'll try to grab your wrist. You can pull up on my arm until you find your footing. No way. You'd fall with me. I'm planted tight on the ledge. You won't pull me off. I can't see you, Dan. You lied to get me across the diamond face. How do I know you're not lying down? Look, this isn't worth both our lives. Take my hand. No. There must be a foothold. I've got your wrist. Pull up on my arm. That's it. Pull. You are one crazy man. You know that? Yeah. So were the Wright brothers. Stand up and walk over here. Stand up? You mean we made the summit? Scout's on it. <laughs> we, we made it. <laughs> We're off the mountain. Hey, to walk away from the edge or I'll be up here by myself. <laughs> Take my hand for a couple of steps. Dan, thank you for saving my life. Uh, any sensible man would have left me hanging on the diamond face. I told you I've been out of my senses for years. <laughs> Maybe after the doctors take that bandage off your head and you can see again, you'll help me pick up those pitons I left on the diamond face. You name the day, and I'll climb with you. Now, how much time do we have left before sunset? Sunset was an hour ago. We both finished the climb blind.
we finally set for Grandma's? I think so. We've got the new Sears Travel Guard baby seat in the car. Right, and the extra sleep and play baby seats. Oh, Grandma will love those. They're so cute and yet practical. The extra baby blankets and bottles are in the vinyl diaper bag. Oh, Sears certainly did make shopping for the baby easy. Sure did. Well, I think we've got everything. Um, honey, I think you've forgotten something. Hmm? <gasps> the baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Your baby's room. Furnish it with the quaintness and charm of Sears Jenny Lynn's crib dresser and chest. Your baby will be secure in our old-fashioned crib built with high sides and a safety drop-side latch. And each handsome maple color piece comes in a non-toxic finish. Sears Jenny Lynn dresser and chest is furniture that will adapt gracefully as baby grows older, too. So visit us soon, because Sears has baby buys bundled up. Available at most Sears retail stores. Presenting Sears Very Charming Spring Shirt Dress in small yarn-dyed woven checks, stripes, or plaids. It's a great versatile dress for work because to finish off the dress, Sears has conjured up a complimenting vest. Vests come lined or reversible in enchanting colors that work wonderful spells on the rest of your wardrobe, too. Sears Vest plus a dress. The bewitchingly correct dress this spring. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. I sell draperies at Sears. Yesterday, a lady came in and said that she'd been in and out of about every store in town looking for draperies and at this point didn't know what she wanted anymore. I asked questions about her tastes and decor and then made suggestions. She was thrilled. She found what she wanted and learned a little, too. It made me feel good to know that I helped her out. Sears people are friendly people who help you find what you want. Sears, 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 where America shines. You've been listening to Sears Radio Theater, brought to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. Climb was written by Bruce Martin, produced and directed by Fletcher Markham. Your host was Richard Whitmark. Our stars were Vic Perrin and Stephen Markham. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. <laughs>